you done it. You found your favorite podcast. It's the No Class Podcast. With your internet buddies, Eddie and Matt. And sometimes, Gary. Hi, Gary. (laughs) (laughs) So we are joined today by our buddy, Gary, whose last name will be withheld in case the FBI is looking for him. He can't be within a thousand feet of any schools or anything. But uh, as I always say about Gary, if there was a third man for long con, he'd be be it. (laughs) It would be him. He's the only one we can trust. Only one. So this is our very special closeout of 2019 episode before we get into 2020. We just wanted to put a little something out there for you to celebrate tonight when you have no one at New Year's Eve. You can put this on and pretend you have three friends in the world. Just, Just quietly cry in a corner somewhere. This podcast goes best with vodka. I agree. I don't disagree. All right. All right. Matt, hit us up with some topics. Well, right on. Well, the first thing I guess I'd lead out with is rest in peace, Frank McCallum. Our good friend and somebody that helped us start the game club, for those of you that know the Nameless of Longview. There was a time when I guess it was the three of us that were running quite a bit. And Frank was one of the other ones that stepped up and helped us get that third and fourth table going. Yeah, he ran a lot of games. And from all all accounts, a great game master. And like at Long Con, he had that dang replica pirate ship he made by hand that was just, oh, man, phenomenal. Yeah, I printed him a couple of little uh, crates to go on it, 3D printed. And, I mean, the scale that he did it in was just impressive. And uh, he helped us the first year. We had an epic adventure, and he ran the low table. And a lot of people, I got, I heard a lot of good oh, yeah. from people that really enjoyed it. He did a great job. So just, you know, really uh, uh, heartbreaking to have someone so young, so talented, uh, taken away from us. And, yeah, and I think they're doing his memorial on the 4th of January, if I remember. And it's, is it, it's not far from here, but it's not in Longview. It's not Athens, but it's in that general area, so... By the time you hear this, it'll be over with, I'm sure. But we just want to say a special uh, shout out to Frank's family and we're thinking about you and thanks for everything. Yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace, buddy. Um, Now that I brought the room down initially. Yeah, way to to kick it off. That's typical me. Um, So we're excited about uh, our good buddy, uh, uh, David Beatty's um, Dark Trails. Yeah, speaking of kickstarts. Yeah, his Kickstarter, you know, came to fruition. He's just got out the thick start rules, haha, like the kickstart rules uh, for people that did the Kickstarter. And yeah, thick start indeed. It's good lord, like ninety something pages. It's, it's a lot of content there. Yeah, I just got a copy of it the other day. Nice. Have you read through yours already? No, I, I've I've been I've been way too busy with work and stuff. Haven't had a chance. Um. But yeah, so it, that's kind of exciting. I'm hoping that we'll get able to kick the tires on that soon. Yeah, and speaking of that, you can still kick it, I think, if you go through the pledge manager. Yeah. It's not too late. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's well worth it. I mean, it's just really phenomenal, and they put some neat tweaks on it. But um, it, like, for instance, uh, you know, like like fanning the hammer, like only the gunslinger could do that now because they found everybody oh, yeah. was doing that. I mean, go figure. Um, but anyway. Just and speaking of david Beatty, of course he was his claim to fame is that he was at the long con that's what absolutely. he's best known for absolutely best known for it long con three which was a phenomenal success and we hope we will be doing a podcast with him soon we had a little mercy on him or we had none on brendan yeah brendan we strapped down and made him do the podcast but we actually felt bad because david Beatty had a lot going on he had a lot of irons in the fire at the he, moment he did yeah, he wanted to, to be on the podcast because who wouldn't but uh, Gary, apparently, yeah, apparently he keeps scooting his chair further away from us. I don't blame him. Um, but but yeah, so we're hoping that we do like a Skype cast or I don't know how we're going to make this work. Don't worry about it. All right. I'll leave that to our table. I'll just tell you when to show up. See, that's what I like about you. <laughs> um, so just a little little fun aside. Um, <laughs> there was fun. <laughs> well, maybe. But anyway. My good friend, and I'm sure yours, Bradley Hammers, the guy who does our intro music, uh, him, and no. his, him and his lovely wife have Glass. really, for one, some bizarre reason, wanted to try out old school Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I'm going to put that on Bradley. Yeah. That it's sure. Bradley that really well, wants to try sure, out first sure. edition. 
but yeah, but but we it really probably one of the reasons that really Eddie did it was because it was a chance to to play with our buddy Carrie. We never oh for sure her. we've missed her, and so anyway, but I, I love because as we were doing things and everybody go oh it works like that we'd go yeah you wanted to play it <laughs> you know but I mean there's some stuff that we've glossed over mentally that you're like oh yeah that was a rule wasn't it you know that not really popular stuff. well just one of the things is. Bradley originally was saying he wanted to play pretty hardcore, so I was like, hey, if you want to do the character generation of 3D6... Down the line. In a line, and that's it. That's fine. But, of course, that didn't happen. Because, really, who wants to do that to themselves? No, because the thing is, even if you let somebody run, drill 4 die 6 drop the lowest, put them where you want, AD&D was still very challenging, even with that. You know, Because even though you're like, look at my warrior. Yeah, but what did you roll for hit points? Uh, 4 Okay, with that con bonus, whoop de do, you've got six. Good luck. An orc hit you one time and still kill you, you know? So, I mean, it was, and that's why, you know, we did a lot of house rules, and this is before the internet. Like, you almost wonder how did people learn this stuff? Because now, I mean, now it's, oh, yeah. It's on the internet. But it was just ironic how people came to the same conclusions where it happened organically or whatever. I mean, I don't know, but it's interesting that like a lot of people end up using max hit diet for hit points at first level or critical crits weren't part of the rich people are like, Oh, that's D and D that's in its DNA. Yeah. That was never a rule that I'm, I don't believe. So not in first is what you're saying. Yeah. Not in first or whatever, but just people like, man, it should count for something when you roll that 20, you know, and fumbles weren't in it, but we did fumbles too. Oh, you rolled a one, you hit your buddy, you cut yourself. But yeah, Sure we did. Yeah, but everybody used it. But that was a little something that you sprinkled on there, and you're like, how did we come up with that? Maybe in Dragon Magazine? Yeah. Yeah. Or you got got together with other groups. Well, that's what I said organically, where I can remember you might meet that one guy out, you'd hear talking like, oh, you play D&D, and you'd you'd break out of your shyness and run over because you're like, hey, you unicorn, you play D&D. Hey, let's talk. Where do you play at? Well, you guys started as kids, and I started as an adult. But for me, it was still like getting inducted into a secret society. Absolutely. It's like you can't cipher this out yourself. You need somebody that's going to tell you what all these rules actually mean. Well, when I started playing, you had to go to uh, game stores where you'd have people who, you'd have people who were, uh, you know, pushing the game and they knew the game. You couldn't go order this at Amazon or someplace like that where, you know, you had to learn it yourself. You had these guys trying to help you. So. Maybe they are the ones who shared some of these rules. That's well, just a thought. While we're on first edition, think of one rule or thing that they had that you really liked. I'll put you on the spot. What is something from first edition that maybe they should have kept? Or you just always thought that that was a cool concept? That's a, You always stump me with these damn good questions. That's a good question. Because, you know, you have, we have, I have a lot of nostalgia for the first edition. But we know what? I, here's a perfect example. I miss... All the reagents. Okay. Put Gary on the spot. And Gary s- scoot up to it. I'm not going to be able to answer that. I can't remember anything. That... Positive? Not really. I mean. Okay. Well, then I'll give you the easy one. What's one bad thing? What's one thing you're glad that it went away? Like just off the top of my head? Speed uh, factors? Speed factors, yeah. Thaco. Okay. But I'll take Thaco, but thinking about speed factors, because we've been talking about this for the last couple of days, did you even use them? We never used speed factors. I didn't. And encumbrance. Briefly. Unless it was but massive. And they quickly said, screw this. Yeah, briefly. It was, well, it was very short. Well, here's one thing. I don't know anybody ever used this. Um, except for I played with some guys out of uh, Blanchard that were using it until I came along and said no. But they did the thing where like certain weapons were more and less effective versus dirt and hammer, armor types. Oh, yeah. That was even. I mean, they went into that kind of minutiae. And I was like, no way. Mm-mm. And we rarely, unless you had the one guy who wanted to pick up everything that the monsters drop, the humanoids, we never really kept up with encumbrance. We weren't draconian. With right. Them. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, I mean, there's, but that's like playing the other day. Poor uh, Bradley's playing a wizard. Well, he had to make a roll, and he had high intel, so he had a pretty good odds, like a 75% oh, yeah. chance to, to learn a spell. Yep. spell. He found a book of first-level spells. There were about, what, six in it? Bradley, you'll never cast shield. He choked out. Like, he only learned two out of the six or something. He rolled these really just series of bad rolls. So then he handed it to me, and he's like, well, the only one I wish I could have learned was shield. That's the only one I got a six success on. And I'm a uh, an elf, so I've got full armor, so I don't care about the shield spell. You know, that right. was the old version where if you're wearing this, it'll give you an AC of four. I have a better AC than that because I'm wearing... Because it blew out his mind. He's like, oh, I, I, got, I hit like AC or 
which back then AC seven or something like I hit you and I went, No, you didn't. He's like, What? And yeah, I he, think it was a four. Yeah, and I said, Dude, I'm fully armored. And he goes, What? And I'm like, First edition, I'm an elf, baby, fighter magic user. I'm wearing scale mail and a shield. And he's yep. like, What? And I'm like, Oh yeah. Especially considering you show up day. but now it's funny if you show up in this edition, adventure broke. You can't do that. Yeah. So it was funny. Yeah, so I was cool was there was only one suit of plate, and I let Carrie have it for her character. But, man, I wanted that suit of plate bad. I was like armored, <laughs> armored wizard, you know, yep. rocking that AC2 or whatever. But, no, nah, man, we had a lot of fun. It was good to see Carrie. We got to play some with Ron. Um, it was good to see Evan. I haven't seen Evan for a while. Yeah. It was cool. So uh, I don't mind Thaco so much. No, you really wasn't, wasn't that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, and I th- if all of these people pick on, there's a lot worse stuff than Thaco in the early editions. Actually, and some of it, there was something that kind of made sense for people because yeah, you wanted, you wanted higher saves in in the earlier editions, and someone at the table was like, oh, well, actually, yeah, you generally you it should in AD and almost everything should be better when you roll mm-hmm. higher, but in the current version, you want to roll low, right? No. Oh, you want to roll high on those too. Yeah. See, now we can't even remember. We've got all our versions many, dancing many in our editions. head. Thank you. That's why I made that comment. Many times to tell I'm trying to, I've got because if you make a rattling around in my head, make a save DC 15. Yeah, you know me. I'm gonna say four reflex will. And I, and but are you trying to get more than a fifteen or less than a fifteen? Yeah. Hi, hi. See, hi. Higher, yeah. But, and that's one of those things that's funny was of all the things that that uh, talking about things I don't like from AD and D. I hated the way the saves worked. That was the and I really I'm gonna alienate somebody here. Sorry, I'm not a huge fan of, of 3.5 D and D. But one thing I did love was the three simplified saves. Almost anything happening that you can be boiled down to. Reflex will or fortitude. Why do you think that it would alienate me? Well, I, you know, I mean, some people are like you're you know, the crunch guy. Yeah. At this yeah, table, but that was fine. I mean, uh, fifth edition has we talked about this. Well, I'm talking about these people, not Did this we? person. Yeah. Because yeah. there's always when we come out there, it's like third edition is my religion. Oh, I love yeah. it with all my heart. It's yeah. like, eh, you know, whatever. It wasn't bad. But no, no. It, I guess hey, there's there's a mu- there's much more malign versions of D and D than yeah. third edition. Well, uh, when we were playing first edition again recently, I'll tell you one thing that I have noticed that I miss. Well-worn character sheets. Because now you've got D&D Beyond, every time you level, you're printing out a fresh version. Yeah. There's not know. like, hey, I'm just going to rub out this and add in my new hit points. Yeah. Or I had some where the hit point spot, where the paper's almost worn through, man, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. I do uh, like the old style sheets. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. there's some laying right over there. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, when I sold that golden rod, I was like, oh man, you know. And I like how simple it is to put together a character because people were like, this is kind of confusing, and some of it is. But if you looked at building a character, it's like you made second level, roll your hit die. Pretty much, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You don't have to go. Okay, now I've got feats to consider, yeah. and my stat bump, and it's it's str- it's a strength and a weakness. Mm-hmm. So, but that's why depending every, on how every, you look at it. everyone here acted like, oh, this is taking a while. But I said, I remember dying, your character dying at the table, and me having another character ready to go five, ten minutes later. Yeah. I mean, well, you guys keep going. I'll have a character. You ready. weren't here when we were building Evan's character, mm-hmm. but we had that ready in probably five or ten minutes. Fighter. Yeah. You know. And if you had done it before, this was the first time for that's everybody. It, yeah. If you're an old hand at We'd it. We'd have cranked them out yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember one time, I just one of those crazy things. I showed up at the table at Long Con 2, and I didn't have the characters. So I was like, oh, crap, we need, like, second-level mutant call classic characters or something. And these people here were relatively conversant with the system, but not maybe old hands, per se. And I thought, man, I'm going to cut into our playtime. It didn't take us 15 minutes to make characters. So. Yeah, and typically I would have done pre-gens, but that was part of the experience I wanted everybody to have, too. Because right. it wasn't a con game. We did have the time to kill. Yeah. So the other thing, while we beat first edition into the ground, sure. and I'll give myself a compliment, is one of the things that I wanted to do was show that you could do an interesting game in that system, because I think some people were a little leery, like, eh, I don't know about first edition. Yeah. But I think everybody still had a good time. Oh, I had a blast. That it wasn't, even if it wasn't fifth edition. Yeah. But just as easily, I could have done this in DCC or fifth edition. Yeah, yeah, you can run it in any of those. But what I liked, and I hope it opened their minds on some things, was like when we met a pack of goblins, the mentality would be like, the many editions of people would be like, kill them on sight, kill them on sight, kill them all. But I was like, whoa, 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 leave some alive. We're going to question them. And for two is, I pressed one of them into our service. And everybody's like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, we made a deal with him. And the goblin's like, yeah, why not? And I mean, we could, so next thing we had a goblin minion going with us. He was our little uh, pack handler for our mule. 
And uh, and then at one point we're in town, I was like, can I buy a guard dog? And he's like, yeah, they got guard dogs. People are like, you're buying a dog? And I'm like, y'all don't get it. Like nowadays your characters are so robust and have all these bells and whistles and max hit points at first level. I said, we've got four and five hit points. There's safety in numbers. If this dog draws a shot off of us, awesome. Well worth the 25 gold or whatever. Yep. And I said, and the other thing is at one point we were, the chips were down and we were getting owned. Mm -hmm. That dog was taking throats, man. It was jacking people up. And I was like, we were like, go dog, you know? So if we hadn't bought that dog, that might've been a TPK. Yeah. And if uh, brother Elmo wasn't there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Elmo was definitely on stick, but which is, where's like, Elmo at? He's in the back. So he doesn't run the whole adventure for you. Because yeah, through the years and you've had this complaint before and rightly so other people that when that NPC ends up like showboating and, and winning all the glory and you're like the NPC but, mm -hmm. so he had him hang back initially but once we were getting known we were like uh -uh, where, where, where's Elmo get him out of here <laughs> right. and uh, speaking of uh, people carrying through people through games Matt has picked up the Dark Souls habit from me oh yeah um, you know for a long time Eddie's wanted me to, to get a PS4 so I finally broke down and I've been playing the poop out of Dark Souls yeah it's fun. We've got to do some multiplayer, which is fun for me. I haven't really got to enjoy that, having somebody else on the other side that I know who they are. I knew that was something you wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, the games, I, I don't. I can't speak for Eddie, but I know it's, to a certain degree I've been a little bit of a game masochist. And, yeah, this is one of those games that I've heard him talk about and read that where some people are turned off by the fact it's just so, like, the learning curve. It's not a little hold-your-hand kind of game. Like, it's pretty. But I remember you talked about this one point in time with us being a little bit older we're of the hardy stock we're used to the atari we and like nintendo you didn't have a save point yeah. and you were talking about how your kids are kind of getting the same dose of that with games like cuphead and shovel knight it's like these are the old school hard arcade style games and you may not realize it but yeah so, I mean, no, I'm not turned off by the, 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 the learning curve and how difficult it is. I love the challenge. I hope I'm rising to it, but I won't lie. It's been nice to have Eddie come help me fight the boss. <laughs> <laughs> the bosses are, are pretty damn brutal because some of this, the generic mobs are frustrating is the word I'll use. But, yeah, the boss mobs are like, holy crap. But it's kind of like learning the pattern, but that's the go to arcade games. Like, hey, mm -hmm. man, how do you beat that one fighter in Punch-Out? Well, you got to learn the pattern, you know, jump back here jump to the left here, pop, pop, two punches and jump back again. You know, you have to, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And on my Facebook, we'll just keep bringing up new topics that spring out on my Facebook. Yeah. I've been asking people about their favorite console games. Yeah. So that was one of the ones we've gone through all the whole timeline from Atari up to the PlayStation four, which you can tell that's really uh, fired people up. People really engage with that post. Yeah. And I think we pretty much agreed for Atari. We kind of like Yars revenge. Yars Revenge and like Gary mentioned, which I thought about this on was Adventureland. Adventure. We had the the yellow, red, and green dragon. There was right. the key, the bridge, the bridge, the yeah. flying bat, and the bat that would come by and steal the bridge or right. key or whatever. Yeah, it was. I think there were a few people that also put in uh, Pitfall. No, I had Pitfall from Activision. Pitfall, I like nice. Pitfall was pretty good. That one was almost too good for an Atari game, yeah. where it's like, wow, that really raised the bar. Well, it was an uh, arcade game first, mm -hmm. and, and it was Activision. Honestly, Activision put out a lot better content than our... The mm -hmm. best thing Atari ever did was Yars Revenge. I mean, it was almost like, with that one, I said, are you sure Atari came up with that idea? Because right. their stuff was so basic. But it was Activision and a few other outlets that, that made some pretty decent games. Right. Yeah, and the, the guy that made Yars Revenge, someday when we do some video game-related stuff a little bit more... He went on to do quite a few more things, so that'll be an interesting topic yeah. for that. Well, that might coincide with, uh, we need to make the trip to the you know, video game museum. Dallas has a video game museum, you know. All right, put us back on track. What's sure. our next one? Absolutely. Okay, so, yeah, first talking about, you know, as usual, if anybody's paid attention, all three of you, um, that me and Gary, Eddie have talked about, um, you know, like leading up to different, Red River and Long Con, we would be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, is this going to happen? Are people going to engage? Are people buying tickets? Well, already uh, the April, the, the Long spring Con fling. Spring, spring Fling has already done better than Red River ever did as far as, I think, ticket sales. So, Crazy, but yeah. true. Crazy, but true. But, I mean, just God bless. We love our friends that make the trick from uh, Shreveport, Bossier. But, anyway, um, but still, we were kind of wondering, like, things that we were going pretty gangbusters kind of stalled, sort of, maybe? I think it's the holidays, though. I think, I think it's, it's the, the same yeah. thing with the Red River. You yeah, get into the holidays, holidays and people holidays. Yeah. aren't thinking about it, or they're trying to buy the... They're getting the Christmas debt. 
Sure, and yeah. a lot of a lot of people tighten their tighten their belts and hide their wallets, you know, post holidays. But anyway, thank you, uh, William William Young from a uh, uh, Geek World Geek World. That we were there the other day on a on a fluke. Um, I was selling off some miniatures and picking up some stuff for uh, the Fallout board game. Uh, miniatures, skirmish game, miniatures. <laughs> what a surprise! Trade miniatures. Trade miniatures for miniatures because that's what I do. But anyway, but William, it was so tickled. He made a point to come up and tell us how excited he was for April and that he and his uh, uh, friend uh, were just, ex- they, you know, they, they they can respect role playing, but it's just not their, their Cup bag. of tea. And that they were really enthused about coming to the April Con because of the board game. So we, we wondered, like, is it worth adding in board games? Does anybody engage with that? Well, thank you. At least we know of two people that are super amped for board games. Yeah, and if the board game thing doesn't catch, if it's just – summer or spring long con and it's all rpgs in the future who cares yeah, this is vote with your dollars no but definitely if there's people that that are in that are i would love for it to be a board game, game event yeah. a board game and rpg event that's rpg I mean. is never going away that's no, always that, our backbone you can always come play rpgs at our cons yeah but it's not gonna go away we don't usually get a chance to play board games that much. And we probably still won't. <laughs> and the people that want to play board games are underserved at the moment. They don't have a con to go to, so we're opening up our doors to them. Yeah, and I would say it's kind of the same thing with when I've always thought, how do you engage with people and get them to come out to play RPG games? Because they're probably thinking, well, I can play that at home with my game group. Yeah, but it's a different experience at a con. Well, the same principle if you've ever never had the chance to play that one board game, it's like, well, there's never enough people, or you've heard that one game's fun, but it's the more people you have, the more fun uh-huh. it is. This is the place where you'll get to have that experience, like that werewolf. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. By night or something. Yeah, ultimate werewolf. Ultimate werewolf or whatever, to where the more people, the more fun it is. Like I've heard, if you can get twenty people playing, it's just which should be easy to do. Blow your mind at the you're, con. You're not going to get that at, at most experiences, but at a con, you could get a group. You could rally the people together and play. Anything. The other thing is, we're going to have a lot of try before you buy sort of stuff. If you've been thinking about that game, mm-hmm. but it's sixty, eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. we've got a copy of it. Come out and play it. And also you have a chance to win some of these games. Yep. And the other thing is uh, we're working a deal right now where everybody that attends may get a free board game. What? See? That's, that's insane, Eddie. That's crazy. That's what we do. We're givers. We give till it hurts. This is true. And it hurts really bad. But, anyway. but long con spring, let's make it happen or not. Me and Matt don't mind doing less work. Yeah. I was going to say, if this goes Kerfluey, it's like, oh, well, that's less work on it. But it'd be cool to have two events. No, I'm But we won't cry no. if we only have one event. But no, trust me, the good thing is it's going well. It's going to happen. And I, yeah, it's on. And I'm hoping it's going to be kind of like, like Long Con now, we don't worry about it anymore. Like people pile in and buy the tickets. We're practically turning people away. But so now we're going to see if this event's doing with what used to happen before. Like, well, I guess we'll wait and see how this goes, mm-hmm. you know. If people come, we'll have it. If nobody comes, we'll we don't see. have it. Well, th- well this one's happening. This it's one happening, happen. but yeah. there won't be a long con spring two. I won't be able to hear this or three or I what have you. About coming, but nah, you know, no, no, no. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. In the more the it's the future it. ones. You yeah, have to yeah. buy this one to get to earn your future. It, you can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat. Yeah. And that's that's what people understand. It's like if you're like, well, I'm on the fence, but it's like I'd love to endorse a con that had board games. Then. Come and endorse it if you want to see it happen again. You know, it's make it happen. Because that's one of those things where I know there's people out there that would that would love to come to a board game role playing con, but there's this or there's that. Man, make a priority. You got the time. Come on out, man. Yeah, and you can mix and match. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do a little RP, do a little board gaming, or all of one. Mm-hmm. Or, or the, you know, and I'll tell you, we had a lot of people that came in at Long Con Three just for the. We had an amazing selection of vendors. So. Uh, come out for board games, come out for role-playing games, and kind of like Long Con 3, I think we're going to have a really good selection of vendors. Uh, as well, we're hoping to attract some uh, spo- uh, uh, represented re- representation from some of these board game companies. Yeah, people that make board games are a lot happier to come out and rep their product. I think they understand demoing, and demoing is a lot easier for them. So we'll probably never have the WotC booth at the con. No. But we can have different game manufacturers like we'll probably have a uh, dark cult yeah. or a uh, new comet. Mm-hmm. And I'm really trying to, uh, uh, talk, uh, my old buddies from Wyvern gaming to come out. You know, that was, uh, uh, was that 
Phillips? Yeah, it was Phillips uh, Game Company. God rest his soul. But Wes and Bradley are st- or Brad are still Brad Ellis and yeah, they're they're still uh, uh, going strong and making. Some, they've got some neat product. I own their their Cthulhu uh, deck building game. It's a fun game. You can play it solo or you can play it with a group. It's, it's really fun. It's a really good game. And then, and then, do you have anything to add to that? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I said, we're just really amped for April. Uh, 2019 was amazing. Thank, thank everybody again. Long Con Three was a tremendous success. We're far beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, great con. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. We, I had, just had, had a great time. I'm getting uh, Brendan and David to come down were mm-hmm. something we had talked about, and we were really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we can't say that. I can, but we can hint at there's some exciting things potentially from Goodman Games that might involve the long con, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So. Yeah, promises have been made, so yeah, we'll certain, see. You know, threats, promises have been made. We're really excited, and we're looking forward to spilling the beans when the time comes. Keep your ears on. Uh, I'm thinking that's probably going to be anything else you wish to add to that, Mr. Eddie? No, you got any more topics for us? No, I think pretty much, you know, that's. Wow, well, that's it? Yeah. Well, it, you get any more participation from Pinnacle next time? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that was one of the things that was neat was, and, and that's, you know, I'm going to touch that. Very good. See, touch you're, it. You're, you're a genius. So, I know. what was really great, anytime we can do this, and we were able to do it at LongCon was. When you have someone who's a big fan of the game or a given product, how cool when you can put that fan with that person. And so just a great example, because Gary's right here, was Gary had been looking at, just ironically enough, really ironically, before Long Gone 3, uh, Savage Rifts, you know, the Savage World game system and their, their Rifts iteration. And so he was like, man, I'm really excited. It's really cool, and I, I really like this and this and this. And so I just grinned. And I said, really? So I said, well, hold up a second. So I walked over to the table and tapped him on the shoulder, and I said, hey, Sean, do you have a minute? He's like, yeah, sure. And I said, hey, Gary, you know that thing you were talking about? This is the guy that wrote it. Now, how cool is it when you can put the fan together with the guy? And what was neat, I just stepped back and watched from a few feet away. As I'd say it's very cool. Yeah, Gary and Sean just started rapping and going at it and just firing off each other. And one would go, and how, what about this? And, oh, man, it was brilliant. You did that. Well, yeah, what do you think about this? I think he learned a lot from Gary. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> it was really neat to it's see. It was a good conversation we had. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was really cool. So I just love stuff like Yeah, that. and part of that is that we have a lot of people in the local, like, Dallas area. We have a lot more RPG special guests or whatever you want to say that we could bring down there and you actually get to chat with them. Yeah, I I think that's really neat. Yeah, mutual support. Yeah. Mutual admiration society. We we appreciate Sean coming out and uh, he was great. He ran, I heard some amazing games. I didn't, sadly, you know, I don't, we don't get to say we put this thing on and we get to play any games really. But that might change. We got an interesting idea for that too. Yeah. So anyway, we got a lot of good ideas. Eddie, Eddie's a freaking genius. Idea man. Right on. He's my idea man. But anyway, we appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening. And uh, you know, by all means, uh, our email address. Do it. This is your thing. Which is long the like the long con at. Um, what is it? Is it Google? Where is it? I can't remember. Who's I, it? I'm seeing it. Leave me alone. And, uh, or, or now. I hate you. <laughs> Con over. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. we hope you had a happy holiday season. <laughs> we hope you have a happy, healthy 2020. Yeah, 2020. Celebrate your roaring 20s coming up. And we just wanted to put out a little quickie here for you. I bet you do more gaming in 2020. Or else. Yeah. All right. I think we're out of here. We're out of hit points. Anybody want to say anything before we're gone? I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) He is good, folks. All right. Later.